And here we have the amazing Miss Timber. And amazing she is. 27 inch of amazement. This is an extraordinary early English wooden doll. Totally original and kept preserved in the original family um, for all of these many, many years. So I want to read you what we have written in the story in the catalog so you will um, we'll keep it all together here for you. We only know this much about Miss Timber's earliest years. Her known story begins with Miss Mabel Gurney. This is about 1735. Miss Mabel Gurney had owned the doll during her childhood years at North Runcton in England. She was the daughter of Sir Somerville Gurney and Lady Harriet May. Toward the end of the 1700s, Mabel became Lady Mabel Curtis, the first wife of Sir William Curtis, who is a son of a wealthy sea biscuit manufacturer. I don't know what that is, but I would love to know what a sea biscuit manufacturer is. And he was a prominent politician as well. I don't know if that ties in. He was a member of parliament and he was Lord Mayor of London in 1795. When Mabel left her family home, her original family home, and moved to London um, to become Miss Mabel Curtis, uh, she carefully packed her doll, carrying, with it, carrying the doll with her to her new home at the Curtis estate at Cullard's Grove. Well, sadly, Lady Curtis died shortly thereafter in childbirth, and this might be one of the reasons this doll has been cherished by the family all of these years is, is kind of like a memory or a memorial, but it did, it passed down from generation to generation to generation in the family. And here she is, this extraordinary costume, absolutely beautiful fabric. Those of you who, who know and love fabrics can probably describe this better than I can, but it has all of this wonderful interwoven metallic gilt threads, and this apron. It is extraordinary. It actually has little stitches holding it to the front of the gown. And then this is all, this is not printed. This is tiny, tiny embroidered leaves and flowers on a backing of muslin with little metallic, one by one by one, little beads um, enhancing that embroidery. Then it has the double-tiered silk hand-stitched lappets that edge all around it, and it is sewn on to the gown. Now, all of that little metallic beading right there is repeated in trims that appear on the sleeves of the dress. And she has this wonderful bracelet, which has comparable trim and beading. And I'm gonna turn her around now so you can see how her beautiful handmade lace fichu or shawl around her shoulders begins at the back almost as a collar and then will extend around the front. Stand up, dear. All right. And look at her bonnet. It has the metallic trim on it, which is the same metallic trim that is on her sleeves. She has her original wig and she has her original slippers. And when I was first cataloging dolls, I always remember at the Winter Haven Museum in Florida, they had a wonderful um, whack, a wooden doll and she, they, it was described once in a book as having a very shapely, well-turned ankle. And I always kind of remembered that. So when I looked at these, some of these early woodens, that's one of the things I want to look at to see. Well, was there any shaping done in the legs? Because to me, that was another measure of this being made to very high artistic standards. If the leg is shaped instead of just simply the crude wooden sticks that appeared on many of them. And this fine lady does have a very, very shapely ankle. I wanna, I'm seeing her profile now, looking at her, and I'm gonna turn it so you can see that profile as well. Very, very aristocratic, very patrician modeling of her face. Very, very fine. And I saved an accessories the best for last. Because look at the, her reticule that she's carrying. It is so extraordinary. With the tassels coming down on the sides, the tassels hanging at the bottom. This is all applique work on the reticule. It's not just a piece of printed fabric. It's so, so fine and so wonderfully, again, wonderfully preserved. 
She comes with a box, which is, has a lot of wear to it, but inside the box, actually this piece of paper was originally tucked inside her hat, but I put it onto her coin pocket. Here's her coin pocket, all hand stitched. And I put it onto here so we won't lose it for sure in the box. And here it is, Miss Timber. Now, why was she named Miss Timber? We don't know. There's no documentation as to why the family always called her Miss Timber. But I'm supposing it was from, she must have come as tall and regal as she is. She's like a tall, stately tree, or certainly a tall piece of wood from that tree. And that's probably, can't you see someone looking at her and saying, wow, she's so tall. She's just as regal as a tree. She's like, well, she's Miss Timber. So that's what her name is, the amazing Miss Timber with her box and there's a few other little relics of things in here, little boxes and things like that. But I believe one of the finest English wooden dolls that we have had ever to sell. But now we're gonna skip cross continent and we're going to go and look at a wonderful Grodner tall doll that will be offered. And this is an exceptional one. I want you to, um, her finish is all original. It's absolutely extraordinary. Let me show you the back of her head first of all. All right, very simple. But when we come around, notice, notice her like heart-shaped face. Very, very distinctive heart-shaped face. Little tiny nose, her, her very strong forehead lines, a sign of, of intelligence at the time it was believed. And look at the curls around her face. The painting of those spit curls is unbelievable. And she has her original tuck comb, which let me show you, as you can see, is not, it's not just something stuck into her head, it's there. It's there almost as though, and I can't tell for certain, but almost as though it was actually carved from the same piece of wood. And then look what else on the tuck comb. What color is it? It's yellow. And what does it have? Red feathery line accents, dramatizing it. Very, very distinctive, a very fine piece of work. But as they say, wait, there's more. She comes in her original um, storage box where she was well preserved and she comes with all of these original costumes. And we left them so you can see how wonderful they are. This one, has, we've attached the little hat to the front of it, a wonderful early poke bonnet. And then this particular one has what I consider to be a stunning reticule that goes along with it. She has a little silk ribbons. You know, these were very dainty dresses. Look at the, um, look at the like, uh, the big puff sleeves with the fitted lower arms. Very, very beautiful. And then this reticule is so wonderful. All of this is, again, it's like linen with a backing on it to give it some stiffness. And then everything on there is embroidered. All of the floral details embroidered and then the little added tassels. Let me see what else I put out here. I think there's seven or eight dresses. Oh, I love this, but I love mauve anyway. And so here's a beautiful um, little muslin dress with a little um, transfer pattern mauve design and the ribbons and the neck work big sash at the back, and again, a beautiful little reticule bag. Oh wait, let me do it this way, then you can see the front with the fringe at the front. Okay, we have another one. Let's see what's this one right here. I love the early transfer patterns like this has. Oh, this one has a dandy little, it's got a little spotting on the gown, age spotting, but she has a dandy little purse as well. All complete hand stitching on all of these. And ties at the back, to tie them together. And then we have this one. And we have a skirt and a bonnet, and what is this? Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful little cape. Silk and tassel and ribbon cape. 
And let's see, there's more petticoats and petticoats. Oh, what's this one? Here's another beautiful long dress. Oh, that's a very, that's a high-waisted one. That's very lovely. So all of these things have been sitting here in our wonderful Miss Grodner Tall. She's not Miss Timber. She's Miss Grodner Tall, ladies' trunk, waiting for to go to its next home. Now, I keep talking about these wonderful German art characters we have today because that was truly Mary Lou Rubright's focus of all of her collecting. She loved them so much. But, but, like every collector, Mary Lou could not overlook the French dolls. So rather than have major quantity in French dolls, she went for major quality and a difference in, in different models, different faces, original costumes. This is just a small sampling of the many uh, French bebés that you will find in the Mary Lou Rubright collection, Miles to Go, Promises to Keep. And so I just wanted to show you what some of them are and how fine they are. Starting over here, this very tall girl is a very, very beautiful EJA model by Emile Jumeau. Uh, a very, very famous uh, piece sculpted with a long face, made in only two sizes, both of them being of the larger type. And this one is particularly noticeable, notable because it is so perfect in every way. Flawless bisque, original body. They always came in these very, very chunky French eight ball jointed bodies with really chubby limbs and wearing her antique costume of the period. Um, a beautiful uh, best white best dress with aqua silk sash and matching uh, bonnet. Very, very fine doll. And I think, I just want to double check. Oh yes, signed Jumeau shoes. Cream color signed Jumeau shoes and original Jumeau socks. Standing next to her are two dolls that I wanted you to see because they are two dolls by uh, Gaultier and they are the different variations he was making. The one in the front is a very, very charming little girl, and in the catalog we show you her naked body as well because it is that early eight ball jointed composition body, and let me see if I can access to it at all. Um, oh, she has this wonderful little diaper on her as well, little button front diaper, wonderful little shoes, and then this long dress which you might want to keep with her because I believe it's original, but some of you would prefer to dress her as a little a child, and if you do, if you take her evening, her nightgown off of her, please keep it somewhere with a clear label on it who it belonged to. So at some point that you decide to move this doll to another collector, you can find her original dress. Let's try to keep all of these things together. She's very, very beautiful, partly because of her petite size, her wonderful original body, her, she's just beautiful in every way. Now, standing behind her was another family member and this is the model that Gaultier made, trying to copy the brew doll, which was made with the kid baby body. And this doll does not have the eight ball jointed composition body. She has a very classic kid body that was, very, uh, that was used by Brew in his earlier dolls. And very distinctive bisque hands, which are different than the hands on the brew bebes. They have these little um, put together curled sort of fingers. Very, very enchanting young lady, and her eyes, I think, in particular, are stunning. This is the antique costume in which she came. I don't imagine it was the one from the factory, but it was certainly from the 1880 period in which this doll was presented. She has her original lamb's wool wig and is altogether a very charming, charming young lady. Now, one of the prizes of the auction is Mary Lou Rubright's stunning, stunning AT, André Toulier, a uh, bébé. Very, very beautiful blue eyes, that soft complexion. What you seek in the, in the AT bébés, you want that very, very ivory-like complexion with soft rose blushing, and she has it to absolute perfection. A very beautiful, larger size, and her wonderful wonderful antique costume. This doll would be a sh the showpiece of any collection at all. Right, I can see it in the middle of someone's cabinet with no other dolls around her, just her and maybe a little chair or something like that. Be an absolute stunning doll and so rare. They're, they're getting harder and harder to find uh, the large ATs at all. Now, 
I put this little girl out here because I think she's so beautiful. I'm gonna turn it around so you can see her wig and her costume from the back, the little bride. She's a Steiner, the C model. She has her original sign body, wonderful original wig and original costume. She has a restoration at the side of her head. Did I just kill her for you? I hope not, because I will tell you where some people see damage, I see opportunity. I think she's a stunning doll. I'm going to show you. This is where the restoration is. Can you even see it? It's nothing. You have this doll, I will tell you. People have looked at this catalog and I've had more people call me about that doll and say, where, where is a restoration? Because it doesn't show, it doesn't show at all. This is a really, this is a splendid doll and gives you opportunity to afford this beautiful doll when you might not have been able to afford the perfect one. Where others see damage, I see opportunity. Now, and I put that in there because I love that doll. I just love her. Okay, look here, folks. You know, you all know dolls in original costumes. It's one of my crusades, and you know, we can't, we can't have the crusade because if they don't exist, they don't exist. But if you have original costumes, you have this obligation to try to preserve them. And even if you say, well, it's really thread worn and I just don't want to keep it on the doll. Okay, fine. Undress it, archival paper tissue it, I label it. This doll belonged to my Jameau that's now wearing a red dress in the top drawer of my cabinet. And make sure it always will be available to be with that doll, even if you don't want to display it that way. And that's, you know, that's okay. However, these dolls have stayed in their original costumes and they are in beautiful condition. In the pink, right here in the pink, we have this beautiful doll by Joani. Oh, she's so pretty. These soft rose satins are, when they're pristine like this one is, are just the most wonderful, wonderful work. Look at the front design of her yoke with the ivory contrast, very beautiful, and rose silk and little fringe, very lovely. And look, by the way, we're looking at the costume, but also check out her eyes, very, very deep. When I catalog, I always call these the splendid eyes because they, they just make the doll pop. There are about five brew bebés in this auction, and I wanted to show you this one I chose because she has her totally factory original costume. Perhaps not the bonnet. The bonnet is antique, but it might not be factory original. But the dress is totally factory original. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And again, gorgeous eyes. And coming around, look at this. Does that surprise you? You didn't expect to see that, did you? Sign brew shoes. And then a oh, gorgeous, gorgeous early, early Jumeau. And the earliest models in this this combination of like red and burgundy was a very popular theme with the um, with the makers and designers of costumes. And sometimes we'll see early um, the early catalogs, for example, that Jamo did with drawings inside them. And this will be one of the styles that they would show with the soutache um, braiding around the sleeves and down the front, the lace edging with the scalloped edge of the lace. And in the back, the soutache trim that is like a faux lacing. It's not really lacing, but it's made to look that way. And this wonderful bustle that's designed to always be like puffed out like that with the pleats that are just absolutely perfect. This is a totally, totally original costume, including the gorgeous bonnet, which matches completely priceless when you can find these original costumes these days, absolutely priceless. And finally from a Jumeau from about, um, this would be like perhaps um, eight years later than this one, so like the end of the 1880s, 
in her factory original costume that I wanted you to see, which is absolutely wonderful. It has all of the cord coming down the side with a little pearl button trim. Like a de well detailed feather stitching at the bottom. Pearl buttons. This is um, a, an attached jacket at the front and the coup de tat, or coup de grace, I guess, coup de grace, not coup de tat, is she has her original Bebe Jumeau maroon sleeve band with the gilt lettering, Bebe Jumeau. And yes, she does have signed Jumeau shoes. And I forgot to show you, but so does she. So these are just really wonderful. So we have signed shoes, original costumes, fabulous, just a very small sampling of the wonderful bisque in the Mary Lou Rubright collection.